Hey everyone, it's Jim and Charles from Melatone Amps. In episode number three, we're going to talk about the new phono preamp, or at least the prototype that's complete. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Well, a while ago, we designed the Universal 6 or 12 SL7 Phono Preamp. And at the time, it caused a fundamental shift in how we listen to music in our home. The reason is, before we introduced the new Phono Preamp, digital source music sounded better. And it was more convenient. So we rarely listen to my large uh, record collection. But with the introduction of the new Phono Pre, all of a sudden records sounded way better than digital. <laughs> digital just wasn't good enough. <laughs> that shift caused us to reevaluate everything to do with how we source music. It also convinced me the digital side could sound better. And since then, we've done some development work on the digital stuff. But that's a completely different story. And uh, in answer to the question, uh, we've never been able to get the digital to sound even close to the analog side. We have got it sounding better though. We have made some improvements. And this winter, when I have some time, we'll probably see if we can push it along uh, even further. And I think the, the simplest answer to, the, to the why that is, is that if you stay in the analog domain, uh, you're always going to sound better as a general rule. So there are terrible sounding records that will be bested by much better sounding digital sources. And there are terrible sounding digital sources that will be easily bested by almost anything that's been pressed on vinyl. But as a very general rule, if you're in the analog domain and you're on uh, vinyl records or you're on reel to reel tape, um, uh, sonically, uh, you will always be better than digital as a general rule. Okay. Um, so now everyone who's ever heard the universal phono preamp says the same thing. It's very musical. And as both a tube amp designer and audiophiles, those three words were the equivalent of receiving three gold stars on our new design work. And um, since uh, we introduced uh, this kit into our system, um, we, we listen almost exclusively to, uh, to records. And in fact, we, we started off with a fairly large um, record collection, and now it's... It's probably tripled. Probably tripled, <laughs> yeah. And it's, you know, this has cost... Um, it cost us thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars as a result because a lot of uh, digital source files are fairly inexpensive compared to, you know, buying um, a, a quality vintage record. Now, most of the records that we're talking about in the system are pre-1982, so pre-digital. Pre There's a few records over the span of about four or five years in the very first years when uh, digital recording came in, came in. So believe it or not, they were recording um, instead of to um, audio tape, reel to reel tape, they were recording in a similar looking reel to reel machine, but on digital tape. That was the first generation of digital recordings. And many of those actually sound very good compared to modern digital recordings. And we're really not 100% sure why, but we're digressing. So here's the new prototype. And you might say, well, it looks like the old prototype. Well, it is almost exactly the same. The big difference is that uh, we're running a different cathode follower. So we're going to run the 6N6P. Which is the same cathode follower that we ran in the 6N1P preamp, which is the first of our modern line. And we're going to build it into uh, into the modern line chassis. So even though the prototype has been built on the, our conventional uh, uh, 
What do we call it? The classic line or the traditional line? Well, classic line I think sounds yeah. better, but it's a cherry plinth with a, a thick aluminum plate on it is, what, yeah. is how we make all of our prototypes. Yeah, yeah. so uh, it'll only we're only going to release it uh, on the modern line. The chassis itself is going to be the next size up. We're going to end up with probably three chassis sizes. This is will be probably the smallest. So we'll go up, we'll go a little bit wider and we'll keep the same depth mm -hmm. and Hopefully the monoblocks that are coming uh, will also be on uh, the same basic chassis, but probably just the wider version or even a little bit wider than that. And uh, this platform has turned out to be absolutely fabulous. And, um, and in fact, as soon as Charles has, um, has the uh, uh, PCB designs uh, ready for manufacturing, uh, we have one more board to order in for this for um, for the production run and then we'll be calling for test builders. So if you want to be a test builder for the 6N1P high gain preamp, uh, then you can go ahead and send us a note now. The, the deal with test builders is the same it's always been. Uh, you pay full uh, price for the kit. We never discount the kits. The margins are just too tight. And um, as a thank you gift, we'll send you a high quality, high testing uh, tubes for it. So there's a little bit of a savings there. And test builders are not testing to see if the circuit works. The circuit's gone through, <laughs> you know, a half a dozen rebuilds and maybe more, I think in this case. Um, but they're, they're checking our build videos mainly. Yeah. And, um, and making sure all the parts are, you know, did we put enough wire in there? Um, is the methodology of assembly as easy to do as possible? Now, we've done so many kits over the years and we've had so many wonderful test builders help us out um, that we've ironed out most of the kinks. Mm -hmm. But it's a nice thing to do, I think, to run the first, usually we run the first three maybe four or five uh, kits through test builders, depending on how much demand there is. And um, in every single case, uh, a test builder will say something that's useful. Yeah, helps us improve. Yeah. yeah, and you know, sometimes it's just a comment about how it sounds. And that can help us to articulate better to customers how it sounds because you know even though we're extremely experienced critical listeners um, we're still very close to the sonics of our own designs and um, having somebody else's point of view really helps sometimes and especially if they have a different taste of music and a very different setup in their system different um, speakers yeah. different room um, uh, and, and sometimes they'll have an insight um, you know, uh, as to what they're hearing and why they think it sounds so great. Um, so yeah, so that's coming. Now, if you have already uh, built um, um, a classic uh, line, uh, Universal 6 or 12 SL7 um, phono preamp, you can upgrade the cathode follower with a 6N6P and a, um, a nine pin to octal adapter. We have them in the store mm -hmm. and you can have the same identical um, cathode follower circuit where you, the, the circuit's identical. The resistor values are identical. The current draw will change because the tubes are very different. Now you can't just drop a high current tube like the 6N6P into an adapter into any position that the 6SN7 takes. That is a recipe for magic smoke, disaster, burnt up amps, fire, possibly even death. <laughs> it's a little dramatic, but uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'm just trying to convince people that, and this, this is something actually that we've been seeing. In the last six months or so, we've seen far more posts from People are just getting into tubes, plugging anything and everything into anything and everything. And that uh, you just can't do that. Um, uh, we, I mean, even though we do a fair amount of experimentation on our benches, yeah. we absolutely never do that. We, we'll have a data sheet. We'll check the maximums of the tubes that we want to try. We'll do a load line and make sure it looks reasonable. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on the note of substituting the 6N6P into this guy here, you can only do it with 6-volt tubes because, of course, the filaments are shared across all of these. 
And so you have to use 6SN or sorry, 6SL7s in the front stage or and, rebase 7F7s. Yeah. And the 6N6P then can go in the adapter and replace the 6SN7. And the main reason why we've done that in the new version compared to the old version is that of course 6SN7s are getting rarer and rarer as we go along. So this is a cathode follower that you don't need to change. That is rock solid. It sounds amazing. We have lots of experience with it. So it's a great option to replace that 6SN7 there. And I think it's probably sonically it's, a, it's an improvement. I think so too, yeah. Yeah. It just makes a better cathode follower. Yeah, I mean, last night I was listening to some really premium records that I just brought in um, on the prototype and uh, on the final revision, because over the last couple of weeks, three weeks maybe, I've been making revisions daily. And this was the one. In fact, Charles, yesterday, I think, two days ago, I think we, I talked about, okay, what are the improvements that we want to investigate? And we put them in place, we got the circuit working absolutely perfectly and uh, sweeps well. And uh, then I followed it up with a listening test uh, last night. And, um, and then Charles said, can we make it any better? <laughs> and at that point I said, <laughs> don't touch my circuit. <laughs> don't, don't touch anything. It sounds fantastic. It's working perfectly. So, um, I mean, at some later date, maybe we'll we'll think of something that we can improve. But at the moment, this is a this is the best sounding phono preamp that I've ever heard. This was the best sounding phono preamp that I had ever heard. And it's still very close. And it's still very very close. So, the interesting thing about what we've done here, though, not to make this video too long, is that unlike the way that we're lamping or supplying the voltage for the filaments here. Charles came up with the idea that why don't we get our transformer manufacturer to give us a custom 6.3 volt AC filament supply. And that was for this preamp. And it just so happens that that, that R core transformer will work beautifully in this design in what we're calling a, a quasi dual mono design. And in a future time, a few future episode, we'll look at the specifications, we'll look at the schematic, and we'll talk about that. But basically, we always have six volts to the filament of the cathode follower stage. And you're going to bring in a switch mode, a DC switch mode supply at six volts or 12 volts for the gain stage. Yeah. So you can still roll six volt and 12 volt tubes. So that means you can roll the very common 6SL7, you can roll the less common but more available 12SL7 and uh, with the Loctos that we rebase the 7F7 which is the sorry yeah 7F7 which yep. is the direct equivalent to the 6SL7 we rebase those as octals and there's a, a wonderful tube the 14F7 that is the direct equivalent to the 12SL7 all made by Sylvania they're actually identical tubes internally it's just the the pinout and the and the, the basing of the tube. Mm -hmm. So this is going to still be basically a universal phono preamp. And yeah, so I, I'm really quite excited because I think the one reason why uh, the world's greatest uh, kit phono preamp has only sold reasonably well, well enough that it'll stay in the lineup, is that it costs a lot of money. And you still have to build it, of course. And it's probably our most complex circuit other than uh, one of our headphone prototypes. Yeah, so it's not, it's certainly not for beginner builders. You need to start on something simpler and smaller like this. But the best news is that we're hoping, like we did with, uh, with the 6N1P uh, high gain preamp, is that we can bring this into the modern line chassis at a lot lower um, retail price. And a much simpler build. I don't know if it's going to be a lot simpler because the component count is going to be really close. Really the same, but there's a lot less point-to-point -point wiring that you'll have to do. Yeah. Well, there'll be almost none. Just a very small amount. And Charles, Charles is the master when it comes to designing fabulous PCBs. And our manufacturer of PCBs, if they're not the best in the world, they've got to be. They've got to be close. Yeah, they do an excellent job. Yeah, they're just fabulous. So that's coming, and that. That's going to be coming this fall. Um, and in fact, we'll be ordering parts hopefully in a week or so. So, yeah. And we'll let you all know when it's available. Well, 
It's been nice chatting. Mm -hmm. I hope everybody enjoys the last nice days of summer. This is Jim. And Charles. Signing off. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>